Oh my God. I don't know square roots. I'm like a communications girl. I, we have engineers that are super smart that can handle all of the math. Me, I could look it up on my calculator for you. So Kylie, <laughs> I hit record without telling you. Oh, okay. And so we basically started out with a math problem, but no one actually heard what the question was and went straight into how you're a communications, you know, pro. Right. Well, it was a really, really difficult math question that you threw at me. So, I mean, if I had all my whiteboards and stuff normally that I would have in the office, maybe that would be better. But uh, yes, <laughs> communication. So, Kyle, you and I have, have known each other for a long time. Right. Uh, and I remember years ago, you telling me that I told you that if you want to make it in this game, you have to have one personal brand on every single channel, like Facebook and Instagram. And actually, I don't think Instagram was a thing at the time. No. Yeah. Anyway. You had told me I was sharing with you. So I was, you were really big on, you were getting your blog posts out. You were like Mr. LinkedIn. Right. Um, and so I was growing out my network and I was doing really well on uh, LinkedIn but I was apprehensive about opening up my Facebook or opening up my Instagram, right? I thought, oh, well, I'm online to some degree. I want to keep some other things private. You had said to me, every successful person um, opens up their social media platforms. So I couldn't just limit it to LinkedIn, right? I had to start thinking about Twitter and Facebook. And at the time, no one really knew what was going to happen with Facebook jobs um, or Facebook as a tool. So I think you had... I think it was the right message. It was, if you're going to go into this, you're going to go into this. This is you. This is your identity. It's not just something you do on the side on Instagram or on LinkedIn. So uh, maybe you'll be happy to know, and I'll be happy to know. Well, I already know because I did it. But um, I had no idea about your journey over the last six months. Okay. Uh, yeah. Because I haven't seen you in six right. months. And I have also deleted my Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and all of that stuff. So I had no idea. And the advice I gave you or the perspective I gave you years ago was clearly wrong. Uh, but, you know, thanks for saying it was the right message. <laughs> I, think, I think it was an important message because what I try to explain to people, especially people that are in our industry, um, you are more than the company that you work for, right? You're not just Kylie from UI. And then if you're no longer at UI, you lose your identity. You're building out a name for yourself. You are a thought leader in your field. You are branding yourself. So I think more often than not, you know, we do hide behind our company brand and we're known as our company. And I think that's really great. Um, but I also think that if this is your career and this is what you're passionate about, um, then, you know, building that brand for yourself and decoupling yourself almost from, you know, your company and where you are today and thinking about yourself as a thought leader moving forward. So I think there was a, a golden nugget of, of knowledge there that you had. I love, I love your positive attitude. Yeah. <laughs> so Kylie, you, you have grown your career from being in the agency recruiting world to being what I like to refer to as an indoor cat, which is great. I love cats <laughs> as well um, on the recruiting side. And, and yeah. I have no real idea of what you actually do now at UITV, right. but you were telling me about kind of running the talent strategies, uh, you report directly into the C-level. Like, right. what are you doing at UITV now? And, and how, how have you seen the landscape change, especially yeah. since March? Well, you know, it's interesting because I think, employee experience is really at the forefront of everything, right? You can't run recruiting as a completely separate function. Recruiter, recruiting cannot just be something that happens in the background or under HR. You know, it really drives your organization and the culture. So for me, I'm responsible for the talent programs. And within the talent programs umbrella, recruitment is a small piece of it, right? External recruiting is a small part of it. But there's also you recruit someone into the organization. How do you support them throughout their journey, right? So something that we'll say at UI is, you know, we hope your next role is with UI. So if there's another area in the organization that you're interested in, how can we best support you to move you into a role like that? And I think that part has to go hand in hand with recruiting. Um, 
And then there's other pillars that kind of fall under, under my umbrella. One of them is looking at um, the skills or the health of the um, skill set or our inventory that we would have at UI. So if we would say, okay, we know that we only have three people in the organization with this skill set, um, what does that mean? So do we need to strategically look at, you know, proactively sourcing? Do we need to look at talent programs that we can bring in? Do we need to bring in an expert to train other people? So really it's a matter of also looking at the skill sets that you have and then making recommendations based on that. Um, and then there are also other, sub other elements uh, of my role, which include, you know, our focus on um, diversity and inclusion. And again, that does overlap into HR um, quite a bit. So I work very closely with people operations. I work very closely with our community outreach group as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of a full spectrum of, of people at the center of it that I'm responsible for. Um, and I'm very active in the Canada North business community. So I'm on the KNBA board. I'm constantly talking to other companies, giving them advice, um, giving them lessons learned as well. So although I'm focused on a lot of internal things at UI, I'm still pretty active in what's happening in the market and externally as well. And so you, you have two little ones. Uh, yes, home. I do. Yeah. We, well, you were giving me the update on Paw Patrol. Yes. And I, I think it's fitting that the Dalmatian is the firefighter dog. That just makes sense. It's good storytelling. Yeah. Um, but how, like UITV being in the, the video streaming world, I have to assume that you guys have been not just okay during the pandemic, but have actually like been booming. Yes. How do, you, how do you balance all this stuff? You've got little ones, you're a teacher, you're a, you're a language yeah. coach, you're a chef, you're a God. Like how, how do you, do you sleep much or how does that work? So, great question. So I know um, probably the reason you haven't heard from me in the last six months is because it's really been a blur. Um, for some context, you know, my husband works at the Ottawa hospital. So he's been working out of the house the whole pandemic. So it's been me at home with a five-year-old and a two-year-old. Um, and, you know, the craziest part for me that came through all of this COVID was finding a work-life balance, um, you know, working in pockets of time where I could, but also remembering that the, the you have to put yourself first, right? So I will wake up at 5.30 in the morning so that I can work out. Because if I have, you know, a, a finite amount of energy that I can spend in a day, I really have to pay myself first. Because once you get to 9am, all of my energy is going to other people, it's going to work, it's going to, um, you know, any boards and affiliations that I'm on, it's going to my kids. So I really almost had to look at how can I invest time in myself so that I can make sure that I'm there for everyone else. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been challenging. Um, Luckily, I've been with a really supportive company. I was on a call with Jason Flick. He's our CEO. Um, and my son had built something in Minecraft. So my five-year-old is super, super into Minecraft. He had built this thing in Minecraft. And at the beginning of COVID, I could say to my kids, yep, just give me five minutes. Now they realize when I say five minutes, it's probably a 30 minute Google Hangout meeting that I'm on. So I can't really appease them with the five minutes later. And so my son kept being like, mom, I really want to show you this. I want to show you this. And Jason, who I'm chatting with, stops our meeting and he goes, okay, let's go see it. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you're on your laptop. Go down, go to, you know, wherever he is, hold it up. So I went down into our basement where my son was playing on his Xbox on Minecraft. And I held my computer up to the screen and him and Jason had a great chat about what my son had built in Minecraft. And Jason was really into it. Um, and so, you know, I'd like to say I have superpowers and that's how I got through it. But I think it, really it was just having support of other people, making time for myself and learning when to say no because I always want to say yes to everything. And I know even with you at one point we were like, Hey, we should have a call, have a coffee. And I was like, you know what, John, I just can't like, I can't right now. I'm so busy. Um, and it was hard because I have FOMO to do those things, but I had to, to, you know, just function. You gotta, you gotta keep the sanity. And that, that I, I love the way that you quoted it. I thought you were going down a different path with the, uh, make Kylie great again. And then right? the Kylie first kind of messaging, but I, I totally hear where you're coming from. And it does make sense because you, you, that's what it was, the infinite amount of energy, not the infinite, the finite amount of energy that one has. Um, I don't know if this is a positive or a negative thing, but I am going to view it as a positive thing. Uh, I turned 40 uh, during the pandemic. Okay. But I have. 
Oh my gosh, are those gray hairs? Yeah, they are. Look at you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're very distinguished now. It's the, I, the salt and pepper. I think I think it's because of all the time I do this. Yes. Okay. Um, so one thing I'm curious about is it sounds like um, you're in a really good spot. You're in an industry that's booming. You've got really supportive uh, leadership. I'm not entirely sure what Minecraft is, but I'm sure it's important. Yeah. Um, in the recruiting world, like it, it intuitively, it seems like it should be easy to hire people right now. Right. It's not. No. Like why, why isn't it like much easier to hire people right now? Yeah. So, you know, just as a company could say, great, the, you know, the market is, is full of these employable candidates. This is awesome. You're also competing with every other company in the world. Right. So if you're a U.S. based company, why wouldn't you hire somebody in Canada and pay them Canadian rates? Um, so I have found that the the location thing, the geography thing, the remote thing is a bit of a double edged sword. Um, there are more people. However, there's also more companies. Right. So I know if, for instance, with us, um, we run into multiple offers all the time where we're talking to a candidate. They had been laid off um, and they still have three or four competing offers on the table, which is great. It's a good problem for the candidate to have for sure. Um, but I think that yeah, for anyone to assume that it's easier to hire people is certainly missing out on, I think, some of that, that context of just the competition, especially yeah. in our space. So what about, there's a lot of companies that, that, and I think COVID hit everybody in different ways, or in, in many cases in the same way. Um, lots of companies had to, to revisit plans, they had to put things on pause, all of that kind of stuff. Um, what, what sort of perspective do you have on the whole idea of you know, uh, I need to hire one person now versus 10 people in six months. We should cease recruiting activity versus we should keep going. Like what, what advice are you giving to these other companies that, that are calling you seeking your guidance? Like, even yeah, if you don't have to hire today. Does that mean you should stop recruiting? No. And that it kills me when people say, Oh, we're not hiring. I guess we're not recruiting. You can never turn off the recruiting machine. Recruiting is more than the transactional, I need to hire one person and we're gonna go out and look for one person. Recruiting, employment branding, still getting the word out there. Maybe you're not hiring a ton, but maybe you've done something really innovative for your current employees, right? Um, there are a lot of things I think you can still talk about, but you still have to be relevant. I think you still have to um, you know, be in front of people. You can never fully shut off the recruiting machine. If you were a company, let's say, and um, I don't know, you were out of stock in something, are you just going to stop selling it? No, you're probably still going to promote it, right? But you're going to set expectations with someone. You can still have conversations with great people. Um, but I think, you know, you want to set the expectation with that person that I don't have something open today. I may have something in a month from now. Right. So you, you certainly don't want to be recruiting active people that are available to start tomorrow just for fishing. Um, but I still think it's important that you keep your recruiting machine running so that when you do find that you have to hire somebody, you've already started the process. Um, the other thing that I think is really short sighted of, of people that want to turn off the recruiting machine is the idea of attrition right? People will leave your company. No matter how great your company is, there is going to be some degree of people that leave, they get a new job, they're offered a different opportunity. So if you say, I don't have any open recs right now, we're going to shut off recruiting. What are you going to do if two or three people leave, right? Then you're just kind of backpedaling and it's, oh my God, what do we do now? Um, so I think it's something that you consistently have to be feeding um, and you consistently have to have it on to some degree. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now you, you founded, um, and I don't know when this will come back, but I, I'm going to yeah. put you on the spot and ask you when will this come back? Because yeah. that's going to change when, you know, everything opens up and COVID disappears, et cetera. Um, you founded a meetup group for recruiters called the Recruiter Collective, um, mm -hmm. which, and, and I've been to a variety of different recruiter oriented or HR oriented uh, 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 dinner and drinks or uh, thought sharing networking nonsense things and most of them are terrible um, <laughs> yeah. and, and I think you could agree based on your laughter yeah. right there. Yeah. the recruiter collective has been awesome every time can you yeah. kind of give just a, a summary of what that is 
um, what success there's been from it and when it's coming back? Yeah, for sure. So it's definitely coming back. Um, you know, back to my whole FOMO, fear of missing out, trying to be everything to everyone and really having to kind of pivot my own energy and time spent. Uh, the Recruiter Collective is something that took a bit of a hiatus. Um, now my kids are back in daycare and school, so I can kind of dedicate more time to, to my passion projects. But what makes the Recruiter Collective different is that traditionally, it would be ludicrous to think to get a bunch of recruiters together. We're all competing for the same stuff. We're all competing for the same candidates, right? So why would you share your secrets with other people? And what I started to realize, you know, in, in many conversations when I wanted to start up this, this networking group or this collection of, of people with shared interests, and I talked to you a lot about it, was what's the harm in trying? What's the harm in, in getting together and, you know, maybe we're all facing the same challenge and maybe we just commiserate together or maybe there's a new trend that we're seeing or there's a new tool. Like there has to be things that we can share amongst ourselves, especially if we're competing with recruiters around the world. I would love for Ottawa to be, you know, that place where our recruiters are capable. When someone a candidate gets on a phone with someone from Ottawa, it's like, wow, those recruiters really know their stuff. Right. So. I love that we can talk about um, unpopular opinions as well. So one game, you were there for that night, but the game we played with the, um, you know, I would say, I don't know, I can't think of an example but right now. Never, ever would I ever won? With something like that, yeah. But we would put out, you know, I think that cover letters are important, right? Mm -hmm. And we had a panel of four people and let's say three people put their hand up and one person didn't. I don't want to hear from the three people that put their hand up. That's not the value that we're there for. We want to hear from the one person that thinks they're not important. And I don't want to hear from that person. And it's why, why, why is it not important, right? How can we be disruptive in our own industry? Um, and we've had really great conversations from that. People have got, um, they've had leads for candidates from it. People have um, secured new employment from it. It's more of us all working together instead of constantly just competing with each other, right? So deep down, you 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 care. Is what I'm <laughs> I don't care what people are saying about you, Kylie. I, yeah. I hear the word yeah. on the street that you're just, you know, evil. Evil, it, yeah, it, I'm a killer. It sounds, it's, uh, you're a killer, is that? Yeah, like, yeah, in, in, no. In the recruiting perspective way? I care, I care about Ottawa. I care about our growing companies here. I care about um, startups here that are thriving. I care about Ottawa success stories. I care about our tech park. And part of that is ensuring that even our industry is well presented, right? And people see the value in recruiting and they see the value in what we can provide. It's about leveling up our industry as a whole right that's yeah. what i care about i also care about people i care about you um yeah. you know there there is some caring there uh but yeah i just i i thrive on change i'm a type seven um have you done your enneagram before yeah i think i was a seven or an eight i'm trying to remember like there's okay. different different titles i've got the book where is it i'm looking at my bookcases there it is um, sure. He's like, I have books. No one can see them, but I swear they're there. It's all like yeah, no, Mariah like, Carey posters behind I'm, you on I'm the other side. Grab the keys to my Ferrari. One moment. Yeah, yeah. So, I uh, show you. so I'm an Enneagram Type Seven. Um, and one thing about sevens is that we love change. We thrive in change and uncertainty and ideas and you know we're idea factories. One of the downsides of being a type seven is that we don't like the mundane. So we'll have an idea, the execution part kills us, right? right. So we want to throw this big thing, but we don't want to do all those little tasks that have to do with it. So a lot of these things that I take on really are part of my, my kind of type seven and wanting change and disruption. Um, yeah. Okay. So just looking at the time, I know you have a hard stop coming up. Um, what is the one thing that you are most looking forward to when we're back to normal? And what about the whole idea? And I, I, I don't know if this is a, a fair question or not, but I will provide some commentary back. I have really uh, had to transition myself to working from home. I've always been a work in the office kind of guy. Right. Um, at the beginning, uh, working from home was like a necessity. Now I kind of like it. Um, my cat will sometimes make an appearance behind me. Yeah, here. yeah. That's fine, but I don't think um, I really want to ever go back to have to wearing a belt. You know, I really like the yeah. scenario and you'll never know 
you know, you have a, a, a professional-ish top on. You can't right. tell. Right. Are you are you still getting like dressed for work or is it like professional up top like pajamas like, down low? Yeah, no. See, but at UI, we were already t-shirts and jeans. Um, I'm not looking for I mean, there are so many things from COVID, I think, that um that i that i hope actually stay in place right when there's a vaccine and things happen like you know just the human aspect of it i love when i'm on a meeting and one of our directors or vps is talking perfect example one of our executives was really trying to make a really important point on a phone call and then all of a sudden you hear a toilet in the background flush because he's in his basement and he's got family around. And so it's things like that where I think you see the human side of people. Um, I hope that we can keep a lot of that, um, no matter what that kind of new normal looks like. Um, and I think just being more compassionate, you know, um, I had my kids doing crazy things in the background during town halls. You know, one of my kids was whining for marshmallows and I was presenting to our whole company. Um, and I would get support messages like, hey, Kylie, you're doing great. You're such a good mom. I want marshmallows too, you know, things like that. So that kind of stuff, I hope we can keep. Um, and whether we only can have that connection in person with people, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, there's, there's just been a lot of good, I think. There's been a lot of bad. Um, you know, certainly I had mentioned to you at UI, we started the year really tough. We lost one of our employees, unfortunately, who had passed away. And so we already started the year on a really shitty note. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think we've really been able to come together and have empathy and compassion and see people as humans. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm actually a little worried about um, when things return to normal that we'll lose some of that stuff that's, that's really good. So what I'm hearing is marshmallows, toilet Stay flushing in the background, Minecraft. Leggings. Uh, leggings <laughs> is, is the key to success. Yeah. Uh, I now know what I'm going to dress up for as Halloween. Uh, and what are you going to dress up as, Paw Patrol? I'm going, to, I'm going to dress up as a Paw Patrol character who's a cyclist while eating marshmallows. There you go. Perfect. You can come yeah, work at UI. Work. Sounds it'll great. Work. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, stay, stay safe. It's great to see uh, the positive energy, things are going well. Yeah. Uh, I understand um, you're you're developing quite the following on Instagram as well. If you want to plug your your header, your bio. Yeah, so my uh, my tag or my name, my handle on Instagram is Kylie underscore Kylie's underscore crazy underscore life. Kylie's crazy life on Instagram. Um, and I share, uh, I have a career coaching IGTV where basically I give my tips and tricks to job seekers that are looking for an employment during, you know, these big changes that we've had. I post stuff about, you know, working on a healthy mindset, which again is really part of my journey that I had in working from home with two kids and a full-time job and all the craziness. Um, but yeah, just spreading more positivity and compassion around. So yeah, if people want to follow me on Instagram, great. Um, or, you know, I do post a lot of stuff on here on, uh, LinkedIn as well. Amazing. Up top. You be well. You too. Bye. Okay.